everyone, how have you been? We're a couple of meeple, and today we're serving up a cup of dice with Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. We're going to tell you if it will be your flavor. Do you take your dice with cream sugar? Uh, and just as an FYI, I am definitely not putting anything in my mouth from this game. <laughs> That's probably a good move. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Viva Java colon the coffee game colon the dice game. Love is... that. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Is uh, It's a one to four player dice game based on the board game of the same name that came out a while back. The object of the game is to get 21 points, and you'll do this by rolling dice each turn, hoping to either create a flavorful blend of coffee beans to score performance points, or use your roll to research and upgrade special abilities. Yeah, so each turn you'll roll five white coffee dice. You'll apply any of these abilities that you've researched, like there's, you could re-roll your dice, or you could flip the dice, or you could devalue a bean, which sometimes I accidentally call degrading a bean. Don't Which degrade a, a bean. Very, very mean. You don't want to degrade a bean. Um, anyway, so after you manipulate your dice that you've rolled, um, you could then decide whether you want to research on a specific colors track or put some number of the same color dice on the featured blend spot. Or you, if you um, make like a rainbow blend, you can get a rainbow blend. And what the blends do is they earn you points. So anytime you create a blend, you're going to earn a point uh, towards the 21 that you need. Um, if you create a featured blend, that's typically a blend of dice of all the same color. Um, uh, it can be two or three or four or five. Yeah. Uh, Do they call uh, it a flush or a straight? Uh, that would be a flush if okay, we're going yeah. by suit. Um, okay. So the dice have color and pip value. There's the yeah. two metrics. So a featured blend is uh, dice of all the same color. And uh, you get a point when you make a blend. So you put it on this little coaster mat that says featured blend. And then you let it, if it goes around the table and gets back to you, yeah. you're going to score uh, some points for doing that. And then you yeah. have the option. Uh, well, first you have to take a die off of your featured blend, making it less powerful. And then decide whether you want to let it roll, let it ride around let the table it roll, again. Let but I'm G. Let it roll around the table again, or if you want to re-roll your dice and start over from the beginning. Right. Uh, the rainbow blend that you mentioned, that is a different kind of blend, and that's when you have five dice each of a different color. Mm -hmm. And that will, is the same kind of thing. You score a point for making it, and you let it, if you can go around the table without anyone rolling another rainbow blend, you're going to score some points for points. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, depending on the number of players. Right, yeah, yeah so points are variable. So, um, and, and that's how you, that's sort of the main goal of the game is to create these blends to score lots of points. Right. However, if you don't, if you don't have the right dice to make either a rainbow blend or a featured blend, you can actually decide to research um, based on the colors that you roll. Um, and so, and this actually changes each game. Um, there are different abilities that you, that you can unlock as you research like certain colors of beans. Yeah. So after you roll your dice, you pick a single color of the dice that you've rolled. And ideally you'll pick a color that you've rolled multiple copies of, and you'll be able to gain that many research points in that particular color. Mm -hmm. um, each color will be assigned a different special ability when you start the game and um, getting those special abilities, like we said, will let you modify dice or, um, you know, have trigger certain things happening when you create a blend or uh, various, various types of abilities that you can research. So the game is a balance between trying to roll dice to blend and trying to get research points to power your future rolls, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, there's also flavor dice. These are the black dice that you'll see. Mm -hmm. And uh, these you gain by when you research um, black beans, uh, which are sixes in this game, mm -hmm. you get flavor dice for your next roll. And those are extra one-time use dice that you can add to your normal uh, five white dice roll. So it gives you a little more versatility on your turn and the, the uh, better chance to get some... Uh, some good blends going. Right, and the cool thing about the black dice is actually um, there's a semi-cooperative element in this game if you want. Um, so say you research like two black dice, so then you have like a pool of seven on your next turn potentially, or when it's someone else's turn, you can say I'm gonna like I'm offering my black dice for you to roll. Yeah. So instead of me. So yeah. So they would roll their dice, and you you'd roll your two black ones, and then if they choose the black ones that you rolled, then you'll actually score piggyback some points off of them if they make a blend with those black dice. Yeah, which I thought was a really interesting mechanic that they yeah. included in there. Yeah, it's cool. Um, at the beginning of the game, you'll have the option to use either a predetermined set of uh, abilities uh, for the game, for each of the research tracks, or you can draw random tiles from a bag, and, and these tiles sort of add some variability to how the game will play out. Yeah. Um, you know, there's different types of abilities, good abilities, bad abilities, abilities. Some that, like, give you, like, there's one ability that I think we used in the game that we're showing you, um, where if you make a featured blend or a rainbow blend, you get an, an, a research point of your choice, yeah. which is actually pretty useful. It's really useful, because you get the best of both worlds exactly. for the different choices you have. Um, and then there's also the option to play with the intern coaster, which I just think is great that you have interns working at this, like, 
coffee company trying to like make a great coffee, um, which opens up a whole other set of special abilities that you can claim if you want. Yeah, and the cool thing about the interns is that when you get a special ability from the intern coaster, only you have that special ability. No one else can get yeah, it. Yeah, so you which can block really other neat. people off from it. Yeah, and I and I use it to great effect uh, to get up to three rerolls uh, yeah. in the game that we play that you're yeah. watching. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's also a solo variant to the game uh, that actually yeah. we haven't tried yet, but yeah. um, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, we actually haven't, and I wanted to get the Viva Java, the coffee game, the original game, um, which I actually just picked up recently. Um, but that one is only for three to eight players, and so when I saw the Viva Java, the dice game, that supports one to four, so solo play and um, perfect for a couple of people, so I'm really glad that we got to pick this up. And here we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. What do I like about this game? Well, I love the chunky dice. The I the most important part of any dice game is the dice. Yeah. Because you're gonna be rolling them, you're gonna be you handling them, dice. and I just I love dice love so much. Love the sound they make. Yeah. How they feel in your hand. Yep. And, We're and, still talking about dice, right? Yeah. <laughs> That was terrible. And this game, uh, specifically, the dice are really, really good. Um, they, they have a nice weight to them. They have, like, mm -hmm. a nice shiny finish to them. Uh, they just feel good to roll. I really like the dice in this game. Part of the fun of playing a dice game is the tangibility of, of playing it, and right. the dice are fantastic in this game. So Yeah, um, and I like that the... Um, I really like the design of them, too. Like, they could have just given you, like, like a set of five sets or five six-sided die and just you could have coordinated like the numbers with it but I really like that they went the extra step to make it like certain colors of beans I just think that like lends to the theme of it and there's beans on the dice it's like yeah, a, a it's so cute and like and the fact that there's like different like strength like the higher it is like the stronger your coffee blend is um so yep. I really like it. It plays super fast too. Mm -hmm. We got a game done, a two-player game done, in about 20 minutes. It's probably 30 to 45 with with more. Yeah. Um, but it, what I really appreciate, and we've talked about this recently a lot, especially with the 11 Z's review, is um, this game works really well with two. Yeah. As much as it does with more than two. And, yeah. And I always really appreciate that. I was really surprised by that. Um, but yeah, I I don't think I have any like differences or problems with either of them. I like them both equally. It's like, really four or two. It's a really fun two-player game, uh, and you know a lot of dice games aren't like you know most dice games that you can get probably are not as fun with two players. This one is actually really good. Yeah. It plays really quick, um, and uh, I also really appreciate that this doesn't feel like a variation on all of these sort of like push your luck dice games that are out on the market. I mean, uh, yeah. there is a push your luck element to this game, but uh, there's a lot of other stuff to this game that feels really unique. I love right. the fact that there's like a, a tech tree, like a research track that That's you like true. go yeah. up, up as you play the game. And, and the main decision of the game every turn is, am I rolling to try and get better abilities or am I mm -hmm. rolling to try and get points? And that trade off feels really good. And it feels a lot more thinky than I think people would associate dice a dice game to be. And so uh, yeah, I, agree. I, I really like the design that it's not just all push your luck. Um, so that's, yeah. that's cool. There's enough, um, cause I mean, we all, I mean, any, any regular watcher will know that I'm a terrible dice roller. Um, but there's enough variability in here with the different abilities you can get that you can mitigate some horrible dice rolling, which um, I think anyone who doesn't. Anyone who who's like you and rolls dice horribly, yeah, yeah, like would appreciate. Um, I, plus, I just feel like there's, um, sorry, I I feel like there's a lot of decisions to make on your turn. Like, mm -hmm. unless you like just outright roll a rainbow blend on one turn, or you just roll like four green beans at one <laughs> green beans. <laughs> That's funny. Um, then you have some decisions to make, right? Like, especially um, considering the different abilities you have. Like, I can, oh, I could upgrade this bean, but then I could flip this bean, or I could reroll these three and go for this. Mm -hmm. um, just makes for a lot of decision making that yeah. I think most other dice games don't. I really like the uh, the ability to set up the game sort of with random abilities and tiles mm -hmm. that you kind of draw randomly. I, I think that's cool. It makes each game kind of unique in its own way, which is neat. Um, yeah. Sometimes you'll get awesome combos of abilities and stuff like that. I, I like the names of the abilities. Yeah. Like one of them is called like um, Office Politics, which is actually like a negative ability. Yeah, but it scores um, you big it points. It scores you big points when you finish it researching it. Um, I like the fact that I like the sort of competitive aspect of seeing if you can bump off someone's blend after they've created one. Yeah, like I 
I've made a stronger cup of coffee, so. Yeah, uh, and I like trying for that, and you know, there's like a competitive, and, and because of that, actually, when it's not your turn in this game, um, you're still invested in what's going on, because right. someone could bump off your blend, or um, they could be researching something that's going to help them out in the future, or or they uh, you could be contributing flavor dice to someone else's role, or they could be contributing to your role, so it right. feels like when it's not your turn in this game, you're still heavily invested, which is a really great achievement for a dice game, because typically it's like, you roll, you do your thing, next person roll, do your thing, and this one, like, yeah. you notice to keep you engaged while it's going around the table, which is cool. I have, definitely appreciate that. Um, um, another reason you need to pay attention to what the other person is doing is because in all the games we've played, the points have been really close, and so it really comes down, towards the end, it really comes down to, am I going to push my luck and hope he doesn't roll well and bump me off so that I get the two points that's going to win me the game, or do I break apart my blend in the future blend, re-roll them, and research to max out points and then get points from that. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things that, you know, if you max out a research track, you actually lose the special ability you've been researching, but it gives you points. And so right. near the end of the game, you're trying to see, well, which track can I max out to, like, maybe put me over the finish line first quickly, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so on the topic of the visuals in this game... <laughs> Uh, oh, TC Petty the Third. I gotta say, uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna lay it out there uh, with one statement, and that is, screw you, TC Petty the Third, <laughs> designer of Viva Java the Dice Game. <laughs> I fucking love the art in this game, and you know what? That's a legitimate part of a criticism of a board game. The art makes uh, evokes a theme and and uh, makes the components fun to look at and play with, and that is as much of a part of board gaming as the design and the table experience you're having with your friends. What? And I'm, I'm going to go and say I love the art in this game. I think the art is great, and it helps bring the theme alive of, like, a coffee shop, okay? So, yeah. so <laughs> stick it to you. Just hit me with that on your blog, all right? <laughs> Well, he doesn't watch like video reviews, so he's never going to see this. But maybe Chris will. So Chris, if you're watching or listening, we love the art. I think it's absolutely perfect for the design of the game. Um, I know that you like the back of the coasters. There's like really cool. Yeah, I was just yeah. So uh, if you if you get this game, which I we I gonna highly recommend it. Uh, spoiler alert. But um, the coasters with all the abilities and information on it, like if you flip them on the back, they're actually like these really cool designs on the back, and like they didn't need to do that. They didn't need to go the extra mile and like make these little like thematic like, kind of like artsy pieces. Old timey coffee ads kind of. It's cool. Like it looks kind of like propaganda but like coffee propaganda which I am totally down with and love but I just think it adds so much to it and it's just so neat and creative and I, I really appreciate that. They like really went the extra mile there. Yeah, absolutely. They're really neat. Um, the, all the components are really high quality too. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we've talked about what we've liked. This is the part where we appease the designer and, and have actual criticism of the game. Right. Um, you know, it's going to be tough here because they've actually done a, a really nice job with this game. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything I don't like, um, I would say my biggest criticism is that I would have liked to have seen more varied abilities. A lot of the abilities, like special abilities you can research, involve... Um, modifying the dice in pretty predictable ways, mm -hmm. add, a, add a pip, flip the die to the opposite side, subtract a pip. Um, and I feel like the when you play with the sort of random setup variant where you draw the tiles, um, I feel like there's not as many tiles as I would have liked to have seen in the game. I feel like the game plays it a little bit conservative with the special abilities they give you, and I would have liked to see some more like unique, kind of like out there abilities, you know? Mm. Um, and, and I just feel like the pool of random abilities is, is kind of small um, hmm. and it would have just helped the game to have a, a lot more variability um, yeah. to, to throw in there so um, I mean that's my main dislike I think it's a, a quality game otherwise but you know. yeah yeah um, if I had any dislikes I this isn't really a dislike personally but I think other people might want to know this and they might dislike it for this reason um, it's just that it is a dice game at its heart and so luck is a huge part of it and even with all of the abilities that you can research um, to, to like, mitigate bad rolls, say. Um, I still feel like, you know, you could have games where, like, you're just dice rolling is awful, and that can, like, kind of ruin it for you. Or you finally get a really great roll, like, that you think is super good, but then the next person, like, say they don't have any reroll abilities, but then they just roll insanely well. Like, I, could, I can see where that could be frustrating, but I don't think that in any of the times we played, we ever ran into that issue. Um... The only other thing is, like, and as thematic as the game is with, like, the little coasters and, like, the different colored beans, the different, like, is very, it's definitely, they definitely played to the theme, and I 
as someone who loves theme and that's really important to me um i appreciate that but i thought they could have just gone like a little step further and there may be an explanation as to why they didn't do this but um like it's a dice game why not sell it in like a coffee can that would have been awesome i feel like that would have popped on the shelf um, it would have been funnier, I think, to like store it that way. Like, I think people put it in your come- kitchen, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, like people coming over, like for a game night or something, they're like, "What is that?" Like, it looks like a coffee game, you know. But this, um, the little box it comes in, it looks exactly like Viva Java, the coffee game. So I think some people might accidentally pick up the dice game, thinking it's the coffee game, even though it's in a smaller box. Whatever. It just, I kind of wish they like designed it a little differently, Spe- especially with the with the sweet art on the back of the. Co- they could have like made like a coffee tin and put some of that art on the front of the coffee yeah, tin. Yeah, and, and made it look like a like a certain kind of brand of coffee or yeah. something. Um, but I the, guess... the closest thing I can think to that was Quarriers when it originally came out came in like a square tin that looked like a die. Yeah, and it would have been cool. For, uh, you mentioned like, oh, they should have sold this game in a coffee tin. And I'm like, that is genius. Yeah, that is so genius. That would have been cool. More yeah. of a suggestion than a criticism, I would yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, maybe they could have like a special edition or something, like a, a special blend, if you will, of uh, <laughs> Viva Java. The dice game. That sound is me committing seppuku. <laughs> Whatever, it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, so, so final thoughts. Um, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, I'll go first. Um, I I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. I thought this was going to be a very light game. I just kind of picked it up because um, one, I'm from North Carolina, so I appreciate that designers are from North Carolina. I know that's like a really stupid reason to like pick up a game, but. Um, the other thing is I'm super into these, like, beverage games lately. Like, I got 11Zs. I backed uh, Brew Crafters on Kickstarter, which is another game from Dice Hate Me Games. Um, I'm really into, like, the indie board game developers now. Uh, I don't know. Just kind of, like, a thing that I'm into. So, but picking it up, I wasn't expecting much, and I was very pleasantly surprised. We've played it a lot. I can see myself definitely bringing this to game nights. Um, so I gotta, I'm really surprised that I'm saying this, but I gotta give it like two espresso shots full. That of two You're gonna be espresso jacked. shots full. You're gonna be ah, jacked two espresso shots like nothing. That's in a grande like latte at Starbucks. That's nothing. <laughs> but it's it's perfect score. I will say that. Yes, that is. And um, and I agree with you. I, uh, you know, dice games are, to me, I, I really only buy them because I like dice. <laughs> Not because I particularly am enamored with the mechanics or the, you know, how they play because they're really kind of straightforward most of the time. This game, you know, gives you a lot to think about while still being light and playable and uh, has f- just freaking fantastic dice. So it's fun to handle. Um, I also give it, uh, I'm going to give it two vente, venti lattes out of two. Uh, is that right? I don't drink coffee. Uh, well, so. a venti latte would be three shots would at be three. Starbucks. But, okay, so um, I'm giving it three out of two then. That's, <laughs> that's my score. So you're giving it above a perfect score. Is, is insofar as that is possible in the universe we live in. You realize we only gave Twilight Struggle a perfect score. All right, fine. <laughs> I'm going to go with... Are you saying that Viva Java, the coffee game, <laughs> uh, hyphen or whatever, colon, the dice game, is better than Twilight Struggle? There are completely different experiences, so I can't Apples say that. Apples and oranges. Yeah. Um, I really like Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. It's it's, a, it's coffee. probably the best dice game I've ever played. Uh, and, you know, that's saying a lot. I've played Martian Dice, Zombie Dice, Dungeon Roll, you know, and, and they're fun in their own right. But this is a really smart... Couriers. Couriers, yeah. This is a really smart, in-depth dice game that, that brings... It has a really nice design that's unlike anything else that's out there. And um, I really highly recommend it if you're looking for a, a fun dice game that's good at parties or... Uh, you know, game nights and stuff like that. Maybe just a quick thing to play, like with two players. I think that's absolutely, really great. It's, it's great. A couple of meeple, stamp of approval. Absolutely, love it. Uh, fantastic work. 